It's so easy to get too busy. Work, family, and everyday life responsibilities can make you to forget to check on the bigger picture, like your health. And since May is High Blood Pressure Education Month, I headed out to Medical Associates of Central Virginia to find out how to make sure we're keeping our tickers going strong. And it can be easier than you think. Take a look. Unfortunately, the vast majority of patients have no symptoms or warning signs to clue them in that there's a call to action and they should get their blood pressure checked or treated. So what are some ways then to make sure of that besides the you know yearly checkup kind of thing? It is reasonable for some patients if they suspect or they have a family history of high blood pressure to buy themselves a blood pressure machine and also in the community there's access um, to blood pressure monitoring devices at most pharmacies. I've always wondered about those. Are those actually accurate? For the most part, they're very reasonably uh, um, accurate. The, the, more, um, the closer you are to your heart, the more accurate the blood pressures are going to be. So when you start getting into the ones that check your blood pressure at the wrist or at the level of the finger, you're going to lose some accuracy. So it's recommended to use um, a, a cuff that goes on your upper arm. You're going to get your best results from those. And, you know, when you're out in the wintertime, you're wearing layers, do you need to not be wearing layers in order to have it checked? Yes, generally you don't want to have multiple layers of thick um, clothing because that's going to affect your accuracy or the reading of your blood pressure. And naturally there's some bad side effects with high blood pressure. You know, tell us a little bit about that and why should we be checking it? Well, untreated high blood pressure can lead to complications, mm -hmm. and the complications are associated with the organ that's being affected. So, for instance, untreated high blood pressure can increase your risk of atherosclerosis, hardening of the arteries, coronary artery disease, heart attacks, strokes, and then also, too, if you have high blood pressures, um, your heart has to um, thicken its muscle walls uh -huh. in order to be able to respond to those higher pressures and that could lead to something called congestive heart failure also too. There could also be um, uh, chronic kidney disease ultimately re resulting in some uh, renal failure or dialysis. So super scary stuff. So basically it's better to head out to the pharmacy or make sure you're going to the doctor on a regular basis and, and especially some folks out there with like family histories, right? Yes, if there is a family history, that doesn't guarantee that you're going to have some issues with blood pressures, but it certainly can increase your risk of that. And what are some ways to prevent high blood pressure then? We always want to um, try lifestyle modifications whenever possible before we even think about medications. So for many people, if they're overweight, losing weight would also be a very effective thing. And also dietary modifications, a, a diet high in sodium um, the average American diet has a lot of sodium, and if you eat out in restaurants, there tends to be a lot of um, sodium in the food that you eat. Mm -hmm. That can actually be significant. About half of patients tend to be very sensitive to sodium with regard to their blood pressure. And then also getting regular exercise also increases your, your likelihood of not needing uh, blood pressure medis medicines. And when it comes down to it, though, if you need to take medicines, it's the best idea to go that route, right? It is because ideally it would be great if you didn't need to take um, medicines to lower your blood pressure, but clearly you know, we have a lot of ed evidence that shows that if you do need it, taking a medicine can decrease your risk of complications of untreated high blood pressure. And you and I were talking a little bit before this and you told me some fascinating history on how medicine has changed over time thinking about high blood pressure. Over time we really do learn a lot from clinical trials and um, for instance, if we go back, you know, 80, 100 years, you know, we in the medical field or the medical profession did not think twice about letting uh, patients, you know, walk around with some extremely elevated blood pressures that in this day and age we would really consider unacceptable to allow a patient to walk around with blood pressures that high. Wow. And that's wild. Now, I just had one more question. You said eating out at restaurants, high so sodium count. How often then would you suggest folks to go out to restaurants? I think the, the important thing to realize is that um, moderation is also very important. Mm -hmm. A lot of people feel that they have to like deprive themselves of the things that they love. And yes, you can go out to restaurants, but if you're going to eat at fast food restaurants and partake in food that is very high in sodium, high in sugar, high in fat, there are going to be definitely some price 
uh, there's a price to pay for that, and mm -hmm. there's going to be consequences. So you really want to, uh, you know, limit your um, high intake of uh, sodium products from restaurants. I would say probably, you know, once, maybe twice a month. But there are people that go out, you know, several times a week and eat in those restaurants. Those um, people are more likely to have problems with their blood pressure. So get the salad? The salad is generally good. You need to watch out for the dressing. The dressing is really what gets a lot of people into trouble, and the croutons also, too. And he is such a nice guy. Dr. Aponte is part of the Medical Associates of Central Virginia in Lynchburg, 434-947-3944. And you can look them up online at centralvamd.com.